Welcome back everybody. Today we're in my kitchen and we're gonna etch this mosaic Damascus dagger blade. My name's Kyle Royer and let's get to it. All right, so first I get a thousand grit finish on my blades. 1,000 grit, you can go higher, don't go less. I've got nice straight lines going on here. It doesn't matter if there's little hook marks going on just as long as it's all in line with the blade. All the surfaces, 1,000 grit. Something else you really need to pay attention to is getting it really clean. You need this to be oil free and just really, really, really clean. So I'm gonna use a bunch of Dawn dish soap. Uh, I prefer the original, but this platinum stuff works too. And uh, a sponge and just start getting all the oils off of it. All right, so I've got the blade clean and now we need a way to hang it in my, uh, my tank of acid. And here I've got ferric chloride, mixed four to one. That's four parts water to one part uh, ferric chloride. What that's gonna do is etch all of our 1084 steel in here, but it's gonna leave the 15 and 20 alone. So that way we'll be able to see the pattern that's in the steel. So the way I'm gonna hang it today is I've got this little wire I'm gonna put on here. And then uh, just screw this little nut any way to just hang it down in the acid will work. So first we're gonna just put it in there for about 60 seconds and then we're gonna take it out and sand all the oxides off. And that way if I accidentally had any oil on the surface, it'll be getting rid of that um, and we'll have a perfectly nice clean blade. All right, here we go, first dip. Make sure the blade's completely submerged in the acid, not the tang. While that's in there for those 60 seconds, like I said, we need to take some sandpaper. This is 1500 grit, and I'm gonna wrap it around uh, this hard object, which happens to be a file. I like using a file, but be careful, because if you uh, accidentally slip off of where the paper is, you're gonna scuff your blade up pretty bad. But I like the file because the paper doesn't slide around on it. So wrap some paper around there a few times. Now we've got this ready to go so we can sand the oxides off the blade. 1500 grit. This is gonna be our first peek at the blade. It's been 60 seconds. We're ready to take it out and sand the oxides off. Oh buddy. All right, we've got all the oxide sanded off, and uh, now we can put it back in the ferric chloride solution. I've got a couple little spots here I'm concerned about that don't seem to be etching evenly so far, but hopefully they'll be okay as we uh, progress through this. But yeah, let's get it back in the acid. We're gonna leave it in there for about five minutes this time. All right, so it's only been like two and a half minutes, but I decided I wanna go ahead and take it out and go ahead and clean the oxides off again. And I'm doing this because I have this little area on the blade that I'm concerned about. I wanna give it special attention. That's why I'm not gonna wait the full five minutes. I wanna keep cleaning the oxides off to hopefully get the etch to be even. All right guys, it's been another two and a half or three minutes. I'm gonna take it out and uh, clean the oxides off again. Like I said earlier, I'm doing this more frequently than normal uh, because I have this little trouble issue and hopefully we can get it worked out. I would normally go like five minute intervals. Shorter intervals are fine. They're just a little bit more work. Something else you can notice guys, as time progresses, when I sand the oxides off, you can see more and more of the pattern is like really starting to show through. You basically want to keep doing this until you have the desired depth. I can't give you an exact number of how long it takes, but it, um, cause it just depends on pattern and everything. Something else you want to do is keep your paper pretty fresh. You can see here, this is getting oxides all on it and it's not really sanding anything anymore. So what I do is I just peel off a piece and use a nice fresh area.
All right, guys, it's been another two and a half minutes, and uh, we're gonna take it out and clean the oxides off again. Like I said, again, I just wanna stress that I would normally do it a little bit longer, but because this bad spot's in there, I've gotta readjust and just go with the flow. So, at this point, we wanna switch to 2,500 grit sandpaper. No more 1,500 grit. I'm, I'm guessing the blade's somewhat like halfway done being etched right now, so I like to do the second half with 2,500 grit paper. Put a new strip of that on there and let's get to it. I wasn't gonna do coffee darkening, but we might have to try it because that might actually help hide that because the coffee seems to do some magic stuff on the chef's knife. All right guys, it's been a couple more minutes. Let's take it out, clean the oxides off again. My wrist and forearm are getting a cramp. That blade's long. So at this point, we're getting close to the final depth of the etch. I can't give you like an exact specific time that it takes because every pattern is a little different. You just kind of have to feel it and see what you want. Um, but since the pattern's getting deeper, we can't quite get the oxides off with the sandpaper, so now I'm gonna start using some steel wool on it in addition to the sandpaper just to keep removing the oxides. We're not, we're not all the way there yet, we're almost there. Uh, the way you tell the depth is just by feeling it and, and looking at it, and you really, it's kind of personal preference as far as how deep you want it etched. Some people like it deeper, some people like it more shallow. If you under etch the Damascus, you probably won't be able to get very much contrast in the pattern. So that's the only disadvantage to under etching. If you over etch the Damascus, it can be a bit more of a problem. You'll likely have a lot of contrast because it's been etched so deep, but all the little edges of the 15 and 20 that are sticking up start to get like sharp. And so when you wipe something down on them, it like everything just sticks to them. Lint off of towels and paper towels and everything. So that's that's the main disadvantage of over etching. And it can just cause the Damascus to look kind of muddy and messy or whatever. I shoot for as deep as I can get without going into an over etch state. And like I said before, the time will vary depending on the Damascus pattern. Some of the, some of the patterns just etch quicker than others depending on what they are. Uh, so you just gotta play around with it and just keep etching until you're happy with it. All right guys, you know the routine. Take it out, clean the oxides off. Alright guys, this may be the final cleaning. I'm not sure, but it's been another couple minutes. We're gonna take it out, clean off the oxides again. Oh boy, it's looking mighty fine. One of the ways I check to see the depth of the etch is I'll go on some of the sharp corners and kind of feel it with my fingernail and see if it's feeling like really tacky or not because you don't want it too like serrated feelings, that means that means you might be getting it a little too deep. I think I could go a little bit more still. Be very careful when you're doing all this sanding and steel walling, guys, because one little mess up and you cut yourself wide open. Like if you cut through the steel wool and your fingers at the edge, this knife's not sharpened yet, but the edge is pretty sharp even without being sharpened, so you could definitely cut yourself real quick. And I have. Cut the end of my finger open on a chef's knife while I was etching it recently. Back in the acid for the final etch. 
Here we go, I think this is the final time. Let's take it out, clean the oxides off, and do a little inspection. As you can see, there was an area right here I wasn't happy with in the beginning. It just wasn't etching evenly, but now it looks like it's finally evened out. That may be in part to being really diligent cleaning the oxides off over and over so it could blend in together. If the ox if oxides are on there, the 1084 has a hard time like blending areas that are etching differently. Thanks so much for watching this video on how Kyle etches his knives. Part two is coming out on Friday, and here's a sneak peek. See you in the next video.